Welcome back, everybody, to the Marshall Thundering Herd Dynasty. The Marshall football program is on a roll this year, 7-0 to begin season number four. We are now headed towards the tail end of the season now with five games remaining on the schedule. Louisiana, Iowa State, Baylor, Utah, and West Virginia. All teams over 500 except Louisiana. They are 2-5. and five. They have traditionally been our rivals in this series so far. We have now reached a point where Louisiana is still in that adjustment to the Big 12 phase. So far, our team has been really, really well balanced. It's not just one guy doing it on offense. It's not just one guy doing it on defense. And that's what you want to build as a program. You don't want to have to have to absolutely rely on your star players, but we have like stars on our team, but we just haven't had the need to lean on them. We've really been able to attack every part of every offense and defense, whether that's getting after the passer, whether that's stopping the run, whether that's throwing for three touchdowns, four touchdowns. Our tight ends are now getting involved in the passing game. Our run game is well balanced. I mean, everything is going right so far this year. And, you know, one thing about, you know, this team altogether is that we do have a lot of players we recruited now who had big off seasons who are now shining in this series, especially guys like Alex Holdman, who's finally getting um, into his groove. Nicholas uh, Reed, who's been a secondary guy in on our team that's really been, I think to me, like been our best defender so far this year. Then there's guys like David Hardwick Jr., who was Remember, back in season one, he was a walk-on after the offseason. Now, I put in the community tab for a lot of you guys to submit your recruits, but I'm deciding to actually keep those guys for my next series. I have no idea when that's going to come. This series is not ending or anything like that, but I think we could be nearing it. I'm not sure. I knew this rebuild would be fun. And I knew it would not be like a super, super long-term rebuild. Marshall was already pretty decent when we started this series. But guys like this, Nicholas Reed, who started as, you know, that quote-unquote walk-on. He was a freshman to begin this series, and he was a guy that was a custom-submitted recruit. And he ends up being like one of the, you know, most fun and exciting defensive players we have. He's had a couple of pick sixes already this year. Well, to start this episode, we go up against Louisiana. They have been struggling so far this season. They are 2-5, and five, maybe possibly the worst team in the Big 12. And I feel kind of bad for them. We moved over from the Big or from the Sun Belt together, and they just have not adjusted well. And it seems like this rivalry is much more one-sided than it once was. So here we go. We are on the road for this game. Not a lot of guys, people in the crowd for this one. Here is Brandon Spadell taking it back to the 35. Now, the audio is kind of off for this first game, so this will be a lot of just uh, me talk talking over uh, some music here as I had to kind of mute the audio. Sometimes that happens. But here is the one of the first carries of the game. Dylan Gilliam threatening to transfer. We're still going to give him his playing time. But he's not going to play as much as I would have hoped if he was going to be for sure staying. Here's a quick screen out to Courtney Lyles, who transferred over to the running back position. He picks up a first down on that one. There's going to be a much more even split at running back now. Here's a throw over the top of the linebacker to the belly of Aiden Steinfeldt, the senior tight end. And he picks up a huge gain, and we're inside the 10. First and goal, speed option this time out to the right side. And look at this glitch. The ball just, I don't even know what happened, just goes all over through the ground also. I don't know what's happened since that patch that they put. Uh, I guess it's a title update that they put through about two weeks ago. What was it a week and a half, two weeks ago? It's really broken options. Fourth and goal, though. We're lined up at the one. Here is Jaime is in the pocket, runs out of time. He could have thrown that, but it just wasn't open. And then we tried to run the football, but it just didn't work out. So now they're stuffed at the one. Here is Louisiana trying to get out of the end zone. That is a loss of about a half yard. Now they're back at like the inch yard line. Hand 
off and there is Chasen Clark in the end zone for the safety, getting their starting running back, Bloom. He could not get back to the original line of scrimmage, and we will get two points on the board. Everybody thought that's how this game would start. Here is Jaimez now, throwing to left side. He's got Dylan Gilliam with a lot of space, fighting forward for a gain of about 17 yards. We had a second and long on that play. It's now a third and three. Pistol formation, play action, fake now. Jaimez throws, and that's an open eight in Steinfeld for the first down. I think they thought we were going to run on that play. Across the 50 now, here is Duke Hymas throwing to Tracy Augustine, who holds on to it. DeWan Whitehead has to check out of the game after that play, but he's back in on the right side of your screen. Here is Hymas under pressure. He escapes the pressure, still on his feet. He will take it himself and pick up the first down inside the 10. There's that athletic athleticism of Duke Hymas. And now it's goal to go again. More option. Pitching it out to Gilliam. The ball's on the ground. Picked up. He runs it in. Touchdown. Just how we drew it up. I have no idea what they did to this game to, to break those uh, pitches. Because that's been two in this game where we had pretty much surefire touchdowns and it ended up being something like that. So now here we are on defense. Here is Enrique Harris who is in his second year starting as the quarterback for Louisiana, trying to move the football this time, giving it to his running back, Redmond. I said Bloom earlier. Redmond does get it to the right side and does pick up a nice gain of about 20 yards. So here they are at about the 17, 18-yard line. Quick screen out to the right side. This one's caught, and this will be a touchdown for Louisiana. Okay, they're on the board. The two win Raging Cajun, and it's still uh, just a one-score lead here in the first half. So now a minute 30 to go. Here's a quick throw across the middle. That's Aiden Steinfeld, and he picks up a first down on that catch. We don't use a timeout here. We have about a minute 15 to go. Here is Jaimez throwing deep. He's got a man wide open. It's Hashim Banagu for the touchdown, but they got a flag on the field, and it's Keon Canada. Remember, we recruited him as an athlete back in season one. He is now our starting left guard, and he has had issues with these holding calls. Here's a throw on the run, this time going back to Hashim Banagu, and that will be a gain of 10. Second and 10 now. Here is Jaime is loading up, throwing deep, and he's got Banagu again. Why not give it right back to him? And it's a big time throw by the freshman. And he was even getting blasted on that throw, by the way. And Banagu just has the speed, the length, everything that you want in a receiver. And that is going to be another touchdown here for Jaimez on the season. I believe that's 20 total touchdowns on that uh, catch. Uh, on that throw right there for Jaimez. Here is a scramble to the right side. He's got a lot of room. And that will be a first down on that play. As we're into the third quarter here, Jaimez in the pocket, a clean one. He takes off. He's got blocking. And look at this. Off to the races. That's his longest scramble of the season. He's inside the five. Almost took it in himself. Now running a man in motion this time. Here's a handoff. No, it's a play action fake. Look into the back of the end zone, and he can't get rid of it. He takes a big sack. That's like a loss of 10 yards. Third and goal now. Pressure. Haim is trying to escape, and he goes down. And we will have to settle for a field goal to make it 22-7 as that one just sneaks inside the upright. And now here we are in the fourth quarter. It's just a one-point game at this point, 22 to 14. Here's Banagu back in the game, making a man miss and picking up a big-time catch and run for the first down, and he goes down with an injury. But this drive continues now in the full house pistol formation. Here's a throw to the left side. This is Robert Session, who is the backup to Banagu, and he picks up a gain of 10. Robert Session is a redshirt freshman this year. He's been really really productive in his limited playing time 
And we get an injury update on Hashim Banagu. A broken femur will miss the rest of the season. On this catch and juke move, and I guess maybe he falls on his leg the wrong way. Wow. He's done for the year. So now we're inside the red zone. Back to the action as Jaimez rolls, throws to the end zone, and he finds Hashim Banagu's eventual replacement in Robert Session. It's a touchdown. Wow. Big news on that drive. I'm sure Duke Jaimez is going to come to the sideline and be devastated by that news. So 29-14 here late in this game. Here's a nice touch pass over the top of the defense, finding his true freshman elite dev tight end, Leon All for a first down. Hand off now. It's Courtney Lyles with the big hole up the middle, and he gets to about the 14-yard line. Just about two minutes to go here in this game. Here's a throw to the right side. It's Courtney Lyles who gets flung forward all the way to the two-yard line. Goal to go now at the three. Here's a handoff. Brian Santana checks in. It's a touchdown. And that will do it in this one. It was close for a little bit in the first half. But obviously, Marshall being the superior team, we took care of business in the second half. End up winning this game 36-14 to in a dominant way. But the biggest news of this game, we're going to be missing Hashim Banagu for the rest of the season. That definitely sucks because Hashim Managu was having a pretty good year. He was probably going to be close to 1,000 yards. I'm not sure if he would have got there, but he was at about 580 on the year. But he was a very, very good weapon for us. Now we got to find a replacement. It's probably going to be Robert Session. We'll take a look at those guys in a little bit. But Brian Santana actually came in, played some decent, um, had some pleasant, decent playing time, Got the end, ended up getting the most carries in this game, 11 carries for 65 yards. As opposed to Dylan Gilliam, who only had seven in this game. But like I said, Hashim Managu, five for 105. I mean, that's just the type of player he is. He can go off at any time. Now we're, he's going to be sidelined. And our defense balls once again. Nicholas Reed with an interception. I was just talking about him. He was one of the original walk-ons on this team. And he adds another INT this year. We do get a commitment after that game, George Coor, out of Saverna Park, Maryland. He is a guard, which I don't know any details about because we were just focusing on putting full points on guys and really getting a core of like 16 recruits. And that's all I really want in this recruiting class. I just want a good core. I want some offensive linemen. And he will join Alex Thomas, who is a local kid from West Virginia. And right now we have five total recruits. One five-star in Ryan Reedy, uh, two four-stars, and two three-stars. So we have a pretty good base for the future in this series. But the injuries in that game start to pile up. Now, if you've noticed, uh, I don't know if, if it's just me when you play this game, but I do not get any injuries at all. The only time I ever get injuries is when I'm playing in some type of super sim. So I was playing the moments for a little bit of that game just to see what would happen and ended up being like this. A lot of injuries, including Hashim Banagu. And that injury happened when we were playing too, which is funny. I do like the fact that we do have injuries now. And maybe that's a strategy to get injuries. Maybe I need to go to Super Sim and then maybe like Sim a play and then play the rest of the game and see what happens if I will get injuries. Because I do want to see them. I haven't had any long-term injuries in this series at all, except for when I've super sim. That's the only time. So maybe that's what I'm going to try going forward. But Robert Sessions is going to play a huge role now for the rest of the season. Caleb Uche also goes down in that game. Now, Caleb Uche was our number one recruit last year. He's been a menace up front. I believe he was 74 overall at the beginning of this year. He's now up to 77. He's out for two weeks, so in comes the junior, Kalechi Nwangwu, who is more of a run-stuffing specialist, and he will get his playing time now in game number two as we go up against Iowa State. As Iowa State is 6-2, and two, and they are a top 25 team. But Marshall has just been dominant. I mean, the number two team in the country right now is Texas, and we beat them. 
I mean, we are that elite right now. Iowa State is led by J.J. Cole, but this is an Iowa State team led by a lot of seniors and juniors. Dylan Lee is a big-time running back for them, but he's a senior and he's out. And then they have a ton of seniors at receiver and tight end. I mean, this is a do-or-die year for Iowa State. And really, this game is pretty much a must-win for them because if they want to compete in the Big 12, they either have to defeat us or hope that we lose. I mean, that's kind of where they're at at this point because right now we're undefeated. Boise State right now is undefeated in conference play. So let's hop into game number two. Let's go over some quick highlights. Here's a play-action fake to start out the game. Here is Aiden Steinfeld who picks up a first down on that catch. Jaime is now in the pocket this time, throwing to the right side, and he's got Dewan Whitehead, and he picks up a gain of about 17 yards and a first down. Jaime is now across the 50, handoff to Dylan Gilliam, and Gilliam picks up a gain of six. Now third and four, stepping up in the pocket. There's a nice throw, and there is Robert Session taking over for Hashim Benagu on the outside. He has some skills that I really like. He's only 5'10", but he really has some size to him and some strength. He's 200 pounds at receiver, which is pretty unheard of for a 5'10 receiver. Inside the 15-yard line now, here is Jaimez rolling to the right and throws it all the way back across the field. That's a dangerous throw, but it falls incomplete. So here's Iowa State on offense here as J.J. Cole, the senior quarterback, he has a direct snap. That time to the running back, it's a first down. Cole with a throw across the middle to his tight end. That's Sam Peters as he picks up a gain of seven. Second and three now. Here is a handoff this time as a big-time hole opens up and a first down here for Iowa State. So a pretty good first drive for them. Now at the 11. To third and seven. This is where we earn our money. Here's a throw in the traffic, and Chasen Clark almost has the interception. I think both the receiver and the defender got there at the same time. So here we are in the second quarter now. Here is Jaimez. He's going to lob this one, and that is caught. It's Dewan Whitehead, the junior, as he picks up a big first down. Now he's going to need to step up with Hashim Banagu being out. He'll play a very big role. First and 10 now. It's a draw play in a wide open lane for Courtney Lyles, and that's a gain of 12 for him. You can just see we're using all three running backs here in the backfield. Here's another throw. Nice across the middle. That is Tracy Augustine who picks up the first down. He will start to earn more playing time as well. Play action fake now. Here is Jaime. Throw it across the middle. It's a touchdown. He's got Dewan Whitehead for six. And that's an excellent throw, stepping up in the pocket and put it right where his receiver was expecting it. We fast forward all the way to the fourth quarter in this one. The next two quarters were kind of boring as we roll to the right side. Haim is trying to score one more time. This one's intercepted by the defense, and Iowa State stays alive late. Taking a look at this throw, Robert Session had it in his hands, and it looked like it just went through and then knocked off of the defender, went high in the air, and they go up and get it. But Iowa State just failing to score in this one. Now here's a late throw to left side on a second and inches, and there's Brian Santana who walks in for the touchdown. We end up winning this game late, and we don't give that lead back. How about Santana, though? I think he, he's going to start to earn some more playing time. You know, he was a guy that I was very excited about when we recruited him at first, and he came in and played some pretty good football his first two years with us. And he's kind of taken a back seat to what we saw in Dylan Gilliam. But now that Gilliam is threatening to transfer, I think Santana earns more playing time now. I mean, I, I think I'm going to start giving him a lot more burn. Every time he gets in this year, he's been really, really good. I think we should definitely, uh, definitely reward him for his play. And you can see that coming next episode. I am definitely looking at... Maybe even benching Dylan Gilliam. If he's threatening to transfer, I don't even see a need to even give him the rock anymore, to be honest with you. But we'll see. I do still want him to contribute in some type of way. I just don't think getting starter carries is in his future, though. 
But the, I think the story of this episode was that we just are now banged up. How about this again? So I tried my theory, and it definitely worked, but I think it worked a little too well. David Hardwick Jr. ends up tearing his hamstring, and he's out for seven weeks. That is essentially the whole season. I mean, if we make the college football playoff, he would be back for that. But I definitely got to tone these injuries down. I had him at 60 before because we weren't getting any injuries. But now I feel like with this new strategy that I've found, I think I need to turn that down quite a bit because it's happening a little too much. The funny thing about this season is that we are now 9-0, one win away from 10 wins, and no Duke Hymas on the Heisman list. I'm pretty surprised at that. They don't have like the best player on the best team here. I guess they're just going for stats for the Heisman. He's not even in the race at this point. But we are in the running for best coach of the year. Washington and I believe Oregon are the only two undefeated teams left in the NCAA along with us. So it makes sense that a lot of Oregon's players, I've heard that they're very heavily favored in this game. And uh, Washington are being, you know, touted for that best coach of the year. So this is going to be a lot of fun down the stretch. I want to see if we can finish the regular season undefeated and then go into that championship game. Right now, Boise State is up there and they have something to say about this Big 12 championship. But they have to finish strong as well. But both our corners are actually a prestige, so there is a big chance we lose both of them in the offseason. So that is going to do it here for this episode. Boise State, as you can see right here, is actually ranked number one in the Big 12 just simply because they've scored more points than us. Uh, and they are undefeated in conference as well. But can they keep it up? Will we face them in the Big 12 championship game if we can finish the last three games of the season undefeated? We'll have to see. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. It's not going anywhere. We are getting towards the end of the season, and I'm excited for it. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.